Okay, I thought I might make a quick video on the uh, duffin schaefer conjecture, finding rational approximations to irrational numbers. Uh, this was inspired by the number file video that's just been posted on this, uh, where you will actually hear James Maynard, uh, one of the two people who've actually proved this conjecture, along with uh, this chap, I'm not going to pronounce his name, um, let's call him Dimitris. Uh, they it basically proved this conjecture in 2019, and it's a conjecture that had stood for 78 years. And it's a, it's a problem in number theory. Uh, and what they were looking at is this idea of um, how we can write irrational numbers and approximate them using uh, rational, basically, fractions. Okay, um, okay so uh, I'll, I'll talk about a bit more of the maths uh, behind uh, what this means, uh, but obviously I'm not going to go into huge, huge detail, uh, just a kind of a summary uh, of the ideas. So first off, um, the, the, the rational approximations to irrational numbers. For example, pi um, can be written as an approximation as 22 over 7. Obviously that doesn't give pi exactly, it gives 3.14 something something. You know, but the first three digits uh, are actually approximating pi, and I could choose uh, a better approximation, so using larger numbers. Uh, e uh, is approximated by 19 over 7. Again, it's giving me 2.71. The first three digits of that also uh, match what E should be. Root 3, for example, 97 over 56. Again, it's, it's giving me an approximation to what the answer should be. Um, so the idea is that we... We, we find it useful to, you know, if we want to understand irrational numbers, if we find rational approximations to them, that helps us to understand these irrational numbers. Um, and this is the, the kind of notation that we'll be using. First off, we use alpha to be an irrational number. That could be any irrational number. P and Q are the rational approximation, given in their lowest terms, so it's kind of a simplified fraction. And we're basically saying that it has to be lower than, you can think of this like an error bound, so basically the difference between the actual number and the rational approximation being smaller than some sort of error, and we want to kind of kind of minimize that error um, to get a closer approximation. Um, and the question is, uh, for, for you know, given uh, irrational numbers, like can we find infinitely many solutions for our error bounds, so we can choose infinitely many p's and q's, which will satisfy um, the error bounds that, that we generate. Um, and just to kind of talk through a couple of examples on this, for example, if I take um, my function f of q to be 1 over q, then using my formula, f of q over q is going to give me the error bound, so I'm going to get 1 over q over q, so I'm going to get 1 over q squared. So I'm going to get alpha take away p over q, like the modulus of that, less than 1 over q squared. So 1 over q squared is my error bound that I'm looking at. And I'll take q to be a positive integer um, to make life easier. You can restrict the domain, but we'll just look at q being positive integers. Okay, so let's actually look at what happens. For example, um, alpha can be any irrational number. Let's take pi, and then also let's take q as 1 in the first instance and see what happens. So basically I replace q with 1, I replace q with 1, so I'm looking for pi take away p over 1, the absolute of that, uh, modulus of that being less than 1 over 1 squared, which is obviously 1. Okay, now if I'm solving this kind of modulus, uh, it, it gives me this, so I put this is in the middle, pi take away p over 1 in the middle, it must be between 1 and minus 1. If I rearrange for my inequalities, I get this. Um, and then if I times by negative 1, I flip the inequalities. So I get that p would have to be between 1 plus pi and minus 1 plus pi. Well, that is satisfied for the integer p is equal to 3. Therefore, uh, if I replace p with 3 and q is already 1, so 3 over 1 is my rational approximation for pi. Well, it's not fantastic approximation, but you can see that it is within our error bound. So pi take away 3 is less than 1. Okay, so it's 0 point something. Okay, so it's definitely satisfying our, our error bound. 
And then the idea is we, we can increase the, the, the values of Q. So we can keep on increasing and then keep on seeing if our error bound can be met. So for example, if I take Q is 3, then I'm now doing pi take away P over 3, less than 1 over 3 squared. I, I try and rearrange this and solve this in the same way. I get to this uh, inequality here. Actually, if I try and find this, uh, there is no integer solution. This is kind of, you know, between two decimals. So this particular one won't, won't give me an answer. But that doesn't really matter. You know, all I'm looking for is, is there an infinite number of these solutions? It doesn't mean that every single value of Q has to generate a solution. For example, if I choose Q is 6, I'm going to get pi take away P over 6, less than 1 over 6 squared. Same as before, I get this inequality. I get my inequality P being between minus 6 over 36 plus pi and 6 pi plus 6 over 36. This time I do get an integer solution, which is P is 19. Therefore, if I put 19 in here, 19 over 6 is a, a rational approximation. And you can see that pi take away 19 over 6, it's, it's a very, it's pretty close. And it's, it's, it's closer, you know, it's, it's a smaller number than 1 over 6 squared. So I'm getting closer and closer to approximating pi. And I can carry on with this method and I will actually find uh, infinite numbers uh, that do, do solve this inequality and give me closer and closer approximations. Okay, so the, the general conjecture was that uh, this inequality here uh, does have infinitely many solutions in co-prime integers, uh, as long as q is greater than 0. Um, for, for, for any uh, irrational number, so it doesn't, we're not restricted to one particular irrational number, we can choose any irrational number, as long as uh, this uh, equation or this uh, limit uh, holds. So the limit says we're going to sum q from 1 to infinity of, well think of fq over q like being our error bound, and then the Euler totient of q, and we're saying like does that go to infinity or not. Um, a very quick thing on the Euler totient, and you don't really need to understand it for, for the, the purposes of the video, but seeing, seeing as it turns up, it's probably worth just mentioning. And the Euler totient, it basically counts how many, I guess, like relative prime numbers to a given number. Um, it's probably best to show with an example. The, the Euler totient of 6, well, basically, I'd list all the numbers from 1 to 6, uh, and I see which of these share any common factors with uh, 6. So obviously, 1 doesn't share any common factors with 6, obviously apart from 1. Uh, 2 does share a common factor. Um, 3, basically 3 shares a common factor with 6. 4, yep, shares a common factor with 6. 5 doesn't share any common factor with 6. And 6 clearly shares a common factor with 6. So we, we, we have 1 and we have 5, therefore the Euler totient of 6 is 2. Uh, Euler totient of 7 is going to be 6 because... Uh, all the numbers, so 1 doesn't share any common factors with 7, obviously apart from 1, that's kind of the special case. 2 doesn't share any common factors, 3, 4, 5, 6, none of those share any common factors. So that's what the Euler totient is. For the purposes of the video, we don't really need to do too much with it because we can use some formulas to help us. But this is the, the thing that we're going to be testing. Okay, so let's actually try and put some numbers in or put some, some uh, letters in see what happens. So this is the inequality that I'm going to be testing. Uh, I'm going to define f of q being 1 over q uh, as before. That gives me that alpha take away p over q is less than 1 over q squared. And I want to see does this have infinitely many solutions, not just for pi, but for, for anything, for any uh, irrational number. Um, so I'm going to put that into my formula. So this is my, the formula that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, fq over q, in this case here, is 1 over q squared. So I'm going to get, actually, what I need to find is the sum to infinity from q is 1 to infinity of the Euler totient of q over q squared. Okay, so I'm going to put q is 1 in, then q is 2, then q is 3, sum them to infinity. The question is, what happens? Am I going to get uh, infinity, in which case there's infinitely many solutions? If I get a number that converges, there aren't infinitely many solutions. Therefore, you know, solutions will be rare, uh, rare to find. Okay, now, so I get this thing. So this is what I'm trying to find. So Q is 1 to infinity, Euler totient of Q over, 
uh, Q, sorry, uh, this is what I'm doing, the Q is 1 to infinity of Euler Q over Q squared. Now, I'm going to use this, um, uh, this rule, uh, I'll call it identity, um, or result. Uh, basically, we have this result here. So the, the, when we have Q equals 1 to infinity of Euler totient of Q over Q to the S is always equal to the zeta function of S, take away 1, over the zeta function of S. Okay, it's starting to sound complicated, but like, what is the zeta function? The zeta function is just defined as the sum from 1 to infinity of n equals 1 to infinity of this thing here. So whatever S is, I put the, I replace S with the, this, uh, the power here. So in the case of what we're looking at, we've got uh, sum from 1 to infinity of Euler totient of Q over Q squared. Well, in this case, we've got uh, the s value being 2, so we get, following our formula, the zeta function of 2 take away 1 all over the zeta function of 2. So we need to find out what this gives us. Okay, now, zeta function of 1 on the top, zeta function of 2 on the bottom. Zeta function of 1, using our definition, is the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power 1. And the zeta function of 2 is n equals 1 to infinity, the sum of that of 1 over n squared. Okay, now we're getting somewhere because we actually know what these uh, infinite series uh, give us. Now, the, the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n does give us infinity. It's, the, it's called the harmonic series. Uh, it's quite a famous uh, result. Um, so we know that that one goes to infinity. Um, we also know from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared, Actually, that one converges. Uh, it gives us actually an answer of pi squared over 6. We actually need to know that. Um, again, we, we know it converges because it's, it, it's, it's called a p-series where p is 2. It's basically if p is greater than 1. So if, if, if when we have uh, n squared, n cubed, n4, n5, all of these converge. So we know this one converges. So basically what we've got is, is uh, something that uh, diverges to infinity on the top something that converges on the bottom, therefore we're going to get something that diverges. Um, so there we go, so we, we now said that we've shown that this diverges, so we've shown that this thing here diverges, therefore our result, we proved that actually this thing here has infinitely many solutions in co-prime integers p and q, q greater than zero. Okay, so that means that for any given irrational number, uh, as long as we, you know, we will be able to find uh, p's and q's such that we, we satisfy the error bound, we get closer and closer and closer approximations to the, the irrational number. Actually, this was uh, actually this particular case was proved. Uh, let's see if I can pronounce his name. Dirich Let, I think. Uh, that was his approximation theorem. It actually proved this particular result in the 1800s. Okay, so let's actually look at one more example of this one. So this time we're going to try and be a bit more ambitious with the error bound. So this time we'll take f of q being 1 over q squared. Uh, and then if I put in 1 over q squared on top, divided by q, that's going to give me the error bound 1 over q cubed. So this is more ambitious. I need to be getting a closer degree of accuracy for this error bound to hold. Same as before, um, I'm now going to see what happens to this. The sum from 1 to infinity of f q over q times times by the Euler quotient, quotient, quotient of Q, uh, which, as before, this is the error bound here, gives me Euler quotient Q over Q cubed, Q equals 1 to infinity. And then the same as before, I still use the, the same result, that I actually know that this thing must be exactly the same as the zeta function of, well, this is 3, so 3 take away 1 over the zeta function of 3. Now, uh, I can write it like this. So zeta function of 2 is n 1 to infinity, the sum of 1 over n squared. Zeta function of 3 is n equals 1 to infinity, the sum of 1 over n cubed. Again, I know that both of these are going to converge. The first one, uh, 1 over n cubed, it doesn't give me a nice number, 1.202 something, something, something. Uh, it's, it's a p-series. Again, I know that the p-series converge. Equally, 1 over n squared, I know, again, that one converges, we met that one previously, that was pi squared over 6, and it's a p-series. So I've basically got a convergent series divided by a convergent series, therefore it's going to converge, it's going to give me a real answer. 
therefore it's not equal to infinity uh, therefore we can conclude that it does not have infinitely many solutions in co-prime integers p and q okay what this basically means is uh, this was an overly ambitious error bound uh, you may be able to find the odd solution but they're going to be very rare you know on in general cases you're not going to be able to find uh, like rational approximations that, that satisfy this error bound.